EVs are not as morally clean as their manufacturers would want us to assume at this time. They are powered by tainted energy and the blood of kids as young as six. Electric vehicles trigger human rights violations and child labor. Cobalt is a crucial component of the rechargeable lithium-ion batteries that power electric vehicles. This compound is currently mined with the blood of weak children. Are manufacturers of electric vehicles also guilty? According to research by Amnesty International, some of the biggest automakers in the world may be using cobalt that adults and children mined in dangerous circumstances. One of the antagonists in this tale is China. Let's explore the dark side of electric vehicles. Why shouldn't climate action be the new trending topic? We only have one world, and it is in danger. Countries, businesses, and individuals assert that they are trying to stop climate change. One of the finest solutions is promoting green energy. We are switching from fossil fuels to solar energy, coal to hydroelectric power, and gasoline and diesel vehicles to EVs. Electric vehicles are marketed as a cleaner, greener, and more sustainable type of car. But are they? How come what is environmentally clean could not actually be clean? The horrifying tale of abject poverty, child labor, and blood batteries is hidden beneath the gleaming exteriors of EVs. Batteries are used in electric autos, as you are aware. But did you know the rare metals used to build these batteries? Cobalt and lithium. The battery's cobalt content keeps it stable and enables safe operation. Its metal color is bluish-gray. It can be found in the rocks that make up the world's crust. Cobalt is used in lithium-ion batteries and in jet turbine generators, tool materials, pigments, and smartphone batteries. Cobalt weighs 4 to 30 Q per battery and is utilized in around 50% of electric vehicles. It can be found all over the world, including in Australia, the Philippines, China, Canada, South Africa, the United States, and Cuba. But the Democratic Republic of the Congo DRC, accounts for close to 69 to 71 percent of the global supply. Let's examine this nation more closely. The DRC is the second largest African nation with a $49 billion gross domestic product. It is a byword for conflict, destitution, and corruption. Under the Democratic Republic of the Congo red soil is the world's greatest cobalt resource. Two million of the 92 million people that call the DRC home depend on the cobalt industry. They go by the name Megotians. In the DRC, there are two just types of cobalt mining, industrial or large-scale mining and artisanal or small-scale mining. So what makes the two different from one another? 19 to 31 percent of the world's cobalt is mined in the DRC, where there are no labor rules or safety regulations governing artisanal mining. According to Transport and Environment, a European clean transportation campaign organization, these mines employ over 190,000 miners. According to the Wilson Center, a nonpartisan policy forum based in the United States, about 20% of these miners are children, and some are as young as six. Every day, these kids play with death. Adults cannot fit inside the vertical tunnels they enter because they are too small. Children in the mine work inhumanly in a furnace-like environment while they dig for cobalt. They frequently dig with their bare hands. However, occasionally they will use shovels. They are not given masks, work clothing, gloves, or more than 20 minutes of oxygen at a time. Nonetheless, these small kids continue to dig for hours. After excavating the rock, they crush and clean it before bringing their finds to the market to sell. How much money do these kids make? Sometimes just $1. According to Statista, a German business specializing in market and corporate data, the cobalt sector is a multi-billion dollar one and is expected to be worth $17.39 billion by 2027. But the child locating and removing the metal never receives this money. Even $1 is worth risking one's life in the impoverished DRC. Many people lose their lives while attempting to get this money. A woman who lost her 13-year-old son in a mine disaster was recently featured on ABC News. He'd supposedly informed his mother he was going to the market to get coal so she could cook, but he traveled to a cobalt mine to provide the family with some extra cash. The 13-year-old never got home again when the mine embankment fell. According to UN-run radio station Radio Okapi, between 2014 and 2015, at least 80 artisanal miners in the DRC perished. 43 miners perished in an accident in 2019. 2,000 illicit miners are thought to die in the DRC each year, according to Siddharth Kara, a worldwide professor at the British Academy. Many suffer from chronic skin infections, 
lifelong lung damage, and other grave wounds. Due to their complicity in the deaths and injuries of children, Tesla and other businesses were sued by several Congolese families in 2019. The case was specifically about a youngster by the name of John Doe 1. John has been a human mule since he was nine, hauling bags upon bags of cobalt for a meager $0.75 daily. John entered a tunnel while at work. His co-workers hauled him outside. When John's parents learned of the disaster, they hurried to the mine site, but it was already too late because they had left John on the ground alone. According to medical professionals, John is currently paralyzed and will never be able to walk again. Why do young people work in these dangerous mines? Because of their ambition to get out of poverty, families in the Congo are placing large bets on cobalt. It's like their chance to become wealthy in the crypto world. The demand for the metal has tripled in the last 10 years and is anticipated to double again by 2035. EVs are driving the demand. The International Energy Agency reported that EVs would sell more than 6.5 million units globally in 2021. By 2040, there will likely be 66 million units. 66 million times 30 kilograms of cobalt equals 66 million. By 2050, the World Bank predicts a 585% growth in cobalt consumption. The goal of the Congolese people is to rise above poverty by riding this wave. They have no alternative but send their kids to work in the mines. Now is that necessary? Many of these kids eventually find employment as unofficial or artisanal miners. Even though companies do not employ them, a long line of businesses waits to pay their fines. Chinese businesses make up the lion's share of those that trade in blood batteries. China produces 60 to 67 percent of the world's refined cobalt, followed by Finland, 10 percent, according to Mining.com. According to the New York Times, Chinese firms have acquired mining operations in the DRC owned by North American and European firms over the past 15 years. Chinese businesses held more than 78% of industrial mines in the DRC as of the previous year. In exchange for Congolese cobalt, China has committed to invest billions of dollars in the DRC's infrastructure, schools, and roads. This is yet another illustration of how China-related tales never have a happy ending. Blood cobalt is currently pouring from China into the electric vehicle supply chain. Chinese businesses are buying cobalt from kids in an effort to persuade them to participate in the blood battery trade. The largest cobalt processor in the nation is the Congo Dongfeng International Mining SPRL. It is a division of the Chinese business Zhejiang Huayu Cobalt Cold Volkswagen, and other producers of electric vehicles receive cobalt from Huayu. The DRC supplies over 40% of the cobalt used in Huayu. A non-governmental organization named the Chinese Corporation as a supporter of child labor in 2016. Huayu made a commitment to improving the situation, but nothing actually changed. Workers are mistreated, discriminated against, physically assaulted, and pushed to work without contracts or sufficient rations in China's large-scale industries. When a worker dies, the Chinese bury the body secretly and pay the family to remain silent. Even before it hits the road, your electric vehicle is killing people. Did you consent to this? The biggest automakers in the world, including Tesla, Volvo, Renault, Mercedes-Benz, and Volkswagen, are implicated in these crimes since they all get their cobalt from Chinese mines in the DRC. Even though they may assert that they have a zero-tolerance policy for child labor, they are also mindful of the reality that it is impossible to trace their whole supply chain. President Felix Chisakiti of the DRC launched Enterprise General du Cobalt, a state-owned business, intending to advance health and human rights in 2019. He made a commitment to take action in 2019. However, it doesn't assist much when Congolese officials supervise child labor. According to Bloomberg Quint, Tesla said in 2020 that it would start using cobalt-free lithium-ion batteries in its electric cars. Still, soon after, the business signed a deal with Glencore, a cobalt mining company, for 6,000 tons of cobalt annually. Therefore, EVs use filthy energy and blood batteries, which is not a solution for the climate. The two cannot coexist since this is a violation of human rights. Human lives shouldn't be sacrificed in the name of a climate solution. In conclusion, electric cars still need to make many improvements before they can be considered clean. That's all on the dark side of electric vehicles. What do you think? 
Are the blood of these children worth the benefits of EVs? Do you think something could be done to curb the ongoing child labor and human rights violation triggered by electric vehicle manufacturers? Let's know your thoughts in the comment section. If this video is insightful for you, then go on and like this video. Please kindly subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more of our updates.